We're still in Ojama Country chat. We're bringing you the news straight live from Ojama Country. It's attention duelist. I'm Ojama Doom. And I'm joined as always by... Ojama Nova. Yay! It's attention duelist Ojama Country style. That's not confusing at all. We're still in our visit to Ojama Country from tournaments earlier this week. Welcome on in, everybody. It's the Yu-Gi-Oh! News Show, where we catch you up with the latest and greatest in all things Yu-Gi-Oh! And there's a lot to talk about. There's so much. Are you excited to inform everyone about it, Nova? Oh, every week I am. Are, are you excited? Hell yeah, I'm I'm so excited. I'm an Ojama. Makes, the, the, why are we Ojamas? There's no reason to it. If you're confused watching this and you're like, why are they Ojamas? We're just still in Ojama country. Live from Ojama country. The latest news in Yu-Gi-Oh. Makes sense. Folks, make sure to keep an eye out for the 12-hour VOD of me and Mistress Doom visit Ojama country. We get into such hijinks as host a tournament, topple a country, <laughs> Taste the local cuisine. Go on a date with Ojama Green and Blue. Wine Festival. <laughs> the Feet <laughs> Festival, which is just, you know, they got a thing. Oh, they got a thing. We got to sample the Feet Festival. Yeah, yeah, Ojamas are pretty big in it. And my be my favorite part of the Ojama Festival, the Speedo Competition. It, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful times. Such, oh. such displays of physique. I know. Honestly, there, there's such a variety when it comes to Ojamas. I love them so much. Chat, we got a lot to talk about. We got a ban list for the TCG, which is quite an interesting one. We got cards being silly. We got Yu-Gi-Oh players being stinky. Yeah, you're being stinky. Stop being stinky. Stop being stinky, you go, players. So we're just going to dive right into this. Yeah, we're going to go straight to the TCG tonight because Konami have dropped a ban list for the TCG. This ban list is set to come into effect the 15th of April uh, for North America and Latin America and the 22nd of April for EU, ME, Africa and Oceania. Uh, this old ban list right here, this caused quite a stir because players were given no time before an event to get cards and to practice. Uh, there were quick changes to the dates of uh, when it was going to come into play to allow those participating in the French Open on the 21st of April to not have to, you know, panic attempt to modify their decks and acquire cards. This decision did appear to happen due to a large public backlash that came out pretty fast. Uh, so we had those date changes. But yes, it was going to be effective, like literally on the 15th of April with an event happening on the 21st, which is just not enough time for players to get cards and test deck recipes. Just it was not a thing. Mm -mm, no. No, no time. Uh, very, very interesting decision to give the EU an additional week, even though this weekend we are getting a YCS. So why are we not getting an extra week over here? Try yelling louder. I hear that'll work out great for you today. <laughs> Try yelling. Oh, boy. Yeah. So Whoa, hey, dude, spoilers. We have other segments to talk about. My here. apologies, my apologies. The script said, lol, be funny, Doom. And I was like, okay, I don't know what to tell oh, you. That's well, what that's the, script, the case. Yeah. The script yeah, excellent it. work. Never mind. Don't yeah, listen yeah. to me. I'm a, I'm a bozo. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't even know what you're chatting about. You, you don't even, even know. Close. You don't even know. <laughs> don't even know. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this ban list. Let's just, let's just dig into this, shall we? Let's start off with the forbiddens because this is quite the interesting ban list. The, for the forbidden section, we have the following cards, all going from three copies playable down to just not in the game anymore. Barlow Savage Dragon Summon Limit Baron de Fleur and Link Karibo will no longer be playable in the TCG. And I'm very annoyed by that because Baron finally became easily available to players thanks to Rarity Collection 1 and then saw herself just immediately get on the ban list, which is remarkably impressive. And yet Konami has a track record of doing this exact thing. Doom, were you playing around the time of Duelist Alliance? No, God, no. Aw, oh, man, this takes me back. History lesson for everyone in chat here. Shadal's was one of the big decks at the time. Very powerful, very versatile. You can splash in a bunch of stuff. Shadal Construct, hugely sought after as, like, the marquee card for any of those decks. It got reprinted in the Megatons that year, and not a week later did that card get axed. It's so annoying when they do that. It just feels so freaking rude. What did Link Karibo do? I like to say Link Karibo did nothing wrong. Hashtag free Link Karibo. However, Snake Eyes did use it in their plays to do some funky stuff. So Link Karibo is the slap on the wrist to Snake Eyes in this ban list. And if you were hoping for any more real Snake Eyes hits, then I'm you're going to be disappointed. I'm sorry. You're, you're not going to have a good time. Nova, what are, what are the rest of the cards? So let's keep on moving. How about we go from forbidden to the limited section? Yeah, so 
So the limited section was a wild ride. Uh, from Forbidden to Limited, we got such cards as Arch Nemesis Protoss, Magic Spectre Unicorn Kirin, Tidal, Dragon Lord of Waterfalls, Thunder Dragon Colossus, and Chicken Game. We also had Anti-Spell Fragrance, but that went from Unlimited down to one copy. Uh, this is a huge mixed bag when it comes to that section. I don't want to see Thunder Dragon Colossus ever back. I hate that card. Some people are excited for it. And if that's your playstyle, that's that's you. You do you. I ain't gonna complain. But I'm not excited to see Thunder Dragon Colossus make a return. I hate that card. Yeah, I'm already on the fence about letting that be in the format before uh, Nemesis Corridor existed. But now that a Thunder Monster exists that can just turn in to Colossus in any deck that runs it, um, look, I see a lot of people saying it's unlikely to be a problem. There's a lot more answers now than there were before Colossus was a problem. I'm still not happy that it exists. <laughs> Yeah, not the, not the biggest fan of uh, Thunder Dragon Colossus, gonna be honest. But they, this oh. list keeps going. It keeps going. Oh, yeah. Did you know that there's a semi-limited section here, too? I do. Uh, that list now includes Armageddon Knight and Pearly Delicious Memory, going from one copy to two. Uh, I'm not sure why they up those up, to be honest. But um, I guess I have more fun with Armageddon Knight, though. Uh, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. It just it just keeps going and then that of course takes us to cards that have become unlimited and oh boy ain't that interesting Yeah uh, Finally cards now moved to unlimited allowed a full playset of three to be played We have destiny hero malicious moved off of semi-limited to a full unlimited Orcist harp forward goes from limited to unlimited Speedway terror top goes from semi-limited to unlimited and the sky striker mobilizing gauge also moves to the unlimited list Mm. The banlist is definitely done. The banlist tradition of causing an upset, but what do you all think? Good hits? Bad hits? Let us know in the comments section below. I'd like to still want to try and argue Link Karibo did nothing wrong, but I am aware Snake Eyes exists. You know? Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Yeah, it, it's rough because like, it's a Karibo. It's one of the good boys of the game, but... You know, when it makes all of the important Snake Eyes cards basically immune to targeted interaction. Um, also, it's a Link One. Uh, you know, you know about like Link Ones being a mistake. Yeah, he he falls into that category of being Link Ones were a mistake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I this was definitely an interesting fan list to drop. Honestly, um, I wasn't expecting some of these hits. We've been hitting Baron de Fleur in our tournaments for like two years. So I don't know. Maybe we. Maybe we thought it was a problem a while ago. I always look at these ban lists and I'm like, which ones of these have we already hit in DA? Which ones have already gone? Which ones have we already <laughs> punished and knew were shite? Which were we right about? Apparently a few. I, yeah. Has Karibo ever been banned? Has there ever been another Karibo banned? Or is Link Karibo the first? I think Karibo marks the first banned Karibo. Yeah. Will it be enough to hinder Snake Eyes or will they continue to be a problem? They're going to be a problem. They're, they're going to keep being a problem. Don't, don't, oh, yeah. They're, this is what they're going to do. This is what they're going to do. For, my understanding is that we're pivoting from pure Snake Eyes over to Fire Kings. Uh, but hey, at the least that means we get to play Fire King Snake Eyes because I find that deck to be infinitely more interesting. If only for the fact that it introduces another solid archetype in the mix. Mm. There's a solid a look-alike Link Karibo with an angry face. I, I, I liked Link Karibo, but uh, Snake Eyes, you gotta ruin everything for everyone. That's what you do. This ban list has certainly been an interesting ban list to have dropped for sure. But the TCG is just keeps on going, fam. It keeps on going because they announced the Light of Destruction reprint set. Uh, releasing 8th of August is the new reprint set of Light of Destruction. This was the set that originally introduced the Light Sworn archetype to the card game and brought about some iconic cards found in modern play, like Honest. That card's popping. Uh, this set includes cards like Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem, Judgment Dragon, Fossil Dino, Passicephalo, and Honest. Um, I've seen a lot of mixed responses on Twitter about this set being reprinted. Uh, it's a, in, Why this set? Why have they gone for this one? Can you explain, Nova? Uh, yeah, actually, there's a lot of interesting ideas behind this one, and I hope it's a trend that we're seeing. So Light of Destruction is the Lightsworn path. Mm. So because we're coinciding this with Legacy of Destruction, it goes along with all of the Light, the Lightsworn cards that came out of that set. 
So we're in reintroducing a lot of older cards into the card pool to give access to that. Uh, and honestly, if we ever do more sets like this, I, th I think we should reprint older sets like this more often. Uh, I kind of wish we did, uh, what is it? Phantom Darkness to I go along with Phantom, Phantam Phantam Nightmare. That, that would have been, been cool. cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. so sick. But uh, I'm not really counting YouTube, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube and Twitters because all I see on Yu-Gi-Oh! Twitter is people complaining. It doesn't matter what the announcement could be. It could be like, you're a Pogos today and they would complain. So, there's oh, that. Oh, so you don't think that they're to hack source, huh? Look at this person trying to delete older internet slang. They said Poggers. They didn't say to hack source. Poggers, Poggers. It's indirect support of Edison format. Rikers is particular. We're getting very expensive. I mean, I'm they if they are supporting other formats, that's like one of the positive moves that uh, they're actually doing, uh, which is not like very common for uh, Konami right now. They're just playing. I don't know what's going on with Yuko, dude. I just report the news. I don't know what their decisions are. Okay, I don't, I don't know. It, you can be excited for it if you're excited for it. I might buy a box. I think I remember this set coming out, so nostalgia might be getting me a little bit here. Oh yeah, personally, I was in high school when this set was dropping, and I've, I've sat through my fair share of lunchroom judgment dragons to not have light, the fear of light sworn burn into the back of my amygdala. I just um, remember needing an honest and paying like 15 quid or something for a copy of honest and I was pretty bummed about it. I just, I remember doing something like that. So this pack feels a little bit nostalgic to me. So there's that. But hey, there's more coming out because the Legacy of Destruction has some new cards. Yes, Legacy of Destruction dropping on April 26th features the next part of the TCG exclusive Ashened Archetype. Let's take a look at part two. First up, we have Shaman of the Ashen City, a level four dark Hyra monster with 1300 attack and 1200 defense. If Obsidian, the Ashen City, is in the field zone, you can special summon this card from your hand, but you can only special summon copies of this card once per turn this way. You can target three of your Pyro monsters that are banished or in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck, then if you shuffled an Ashen monster, you can add an Obsidian, the Ashen City, from your deck to your hand, and you can only use it this effect of Shaman of the Ashen City once per turn. That design um, is peak, by the way. Oh this my god, they all look card so design. Good. Oh my god, peak card design. They literally made Dark Souls 3 the archetype, and I cannot stop it. Yeah, no, it's so good. It looks so cool. I can't, I'm kind of, when it gets, if it gets into Master Duel, if they decide to, like, take it from the TCG and whack it in Master Duel, I want to give it a bash. Oh yeah, I'm playing this so much when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have Spearhead of the Ashen City, a level 4 Dark Pyro effect monster with 1700 attack and 100 defense. If Obsidian the Ashen City is in the field zone, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon copies of this card once per turn this way. If your opponent controls a monster with 2800 or more attack, you can tribute this card, then target one card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. You can only use this effect of Spearhead of the Ashen City once per turn. Uh, this might seem odd for those of you who aren't in the know, but the deck has a big mechanic where we give our opponent a monster called Vidos, who meets that requirement. And then once they have it, we can bounce any card they control back to the hand. Wow, spicy, spicy tech right there. Speaking of this card, it now has a fusion form. Vidos the Dragon of Endless Darkness. Oh, why does the dragon look end. good? Oh, it's so, it's so... Why are they so pretty? <laughs> It's a level 10 Dark Pyro Fusion monster with 3,000 attack and 1,700 defense, requiring Vados, the Eruption Dragon of Extinction, and two or more level 9 or lower Pyro monsters as material. It can't be destroyed by card effect, nor can your opponent target it with monster effects. If this card is Fusion Summoned, you can destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls, and when your opponent activates a card or effect on the field as a quick effect, you can send a face of Ashen card you can go to the graveyard to destroy it in that card. You can only use this effect of Vados, the Dragon of Endless Darkness, once per turn. I look so good. God damn it. If I look, if I was a dragon, I want to look like that. Yeah. But I'm a dog. Big dark armor plating. But I'm a dog. Uh, like, well, you never know what evolutions might happen. Keep an open mind. All right, so I got to go breed with some people and see what happens. Gotcha. Hey, I'm always out here saying you got to uh, breed for that need to grow big dragon horns. I don't think I've ever heard you say that. Uh, well, then I guess we haven't been co-hosting long enough. I thought we anyway. were like best friends, and uh, now I find out you have a breed to make Dragon King? What is this? What is this new hey, show? 
that that's what's exciting. You know, even if you have best friends, you learn something new about them all the time. Okay, I'm sure. Yeah, let me just let me tweet that to... out. Um, hey, he yeah. wants to breed me so I can make a dragon. Sure, let's Ev go. Everyone knows this. It's not a revelation, chat. Don't worry about it. You're uh, you're all calm. You're not talking about it. Uh, which is good. We all knew this about me. I, I think if I tweeted that, I would regret it. <laughs> I think things would get real fucking weird, real fucking fast. Real all right. Well, fast. unfortunately, we're gonna have to stop being weird and stop horny being weird and, and horny talk and about... talk about. Yep. Yep. Trading cards. Trading cards. I love trading cards. Mm -mm -mm. Those are way more normal. Yep. Embers of the Ashen is a level 8 dark pyro fusion monster with 2900 attack and 2400 defense, requiring any two pyro monsters as material. If this card is fusion summoned, you can target a field spell in your graveyard and add it to your hand. And at the start of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's pyro monster, you can destroy that opponent's monster, and if it's your turn, this card can make a second attack in a row. You can only use each effect on this card once per turn. Neat. Hey, I just remember that time that I fucked a dragon, and I didn't make a dragon when I fucked Red Dragon Archfiend. That that exists, Nova. That that artwork well, exists. Yeah. Well, were you using protection? Was like mm, the I species don't know. not compatible? I like, like, I don't know. I just I forgot about it. Honestly, I blank that memory from my mind, and then occasionally it creeps up on me, and I was like, remember that time that uh, you know, the the, the Red Dragon Archfiend just <laughs> and like. And you were all yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, be beautiful. It was like art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that time. It was good time. It was good art. Good art. It was a manga panel. Whole manga panel about it. Bonk! News! No horniness! It's the dragon's fault! It's this archetype's fault! Nothing, Captain. It's a really serious, super serial Yu Gi Oh! news show which catches you up with all the information of Yu Gi Oh! with only weird, horny kinkiness occasionally thrown in. Occasionally. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's there for spice. Yeah, yeah. Next up is Extinguishing the Ashen, a normal spell card that sends a dark pyro monster from your deck to the graveyard. Then you can add a level 5 or higher pyro monster from your grave to your hand. For the rest of the turn after this card resolves, you can't special summon from the extra deck except pyro monsters. And you can banish this card from your graveyard to fusion summon a pyro fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. And you can only use each effect of this card once per turn. Hey, Captain King Dog says that's how they like their news shows, honestly. So we're, the, we're just the right blend, you know? The right blend of VTuber craziness and news. Yeah, look, if you want your regular Yu Gi Oh news, there's plenty of other people who are keeping up to date with this one. We're the only ones talking about how Red Dragon Archfiend is going balls deep into anything, all right? Like, this is our this is our niche. Don't, don't worry about it, it never happened. Anyway, don't know what you're talking about. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to rekindle with a Red Dragon Archfiend. Hell yeah. Rekindling the Ash, and also known as I should call him. <laughs> Rekindling the Ashen is a quick play spell card that places an Ashen card that is banished or in your graveyard on the bottom of your main deck, except a copy of this card, then targets an effect monster your opponent controls and negates its effects until the end of this turn. You can only activate one copy of this card per turn. Neat, neat, For neat. For nice little recycling negation card. It's, it's pretty good. Good stuff, good stuff. And our last card, probably the strongest, is Ashened to Endlessness. A oh, continuous trap it. card that, during the main phase, you can fusion summon a pyro fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from either field as material, Ooh. including Vados, the Eruption Dragon of Extinction. And if you do, it gains 500 attack for each material used. You can banish this card and one dark pyro monster from your graveyard, and all monsters your opponent currently controls become pyro until the end of this turn. You can only use each effect of Ashen to Endlessness once per turn. That's a, that's a wacky-ass card right there oh absolutely uh the main combo here is that the field spell for the deck obsidim makes your opponent's monsters pyro types during your turn only so if you can make this survive for a turn and get it activated face up give them vados and then you can super poly their entire board make the fusion monster and then go ham because it's going to be huge I like this archetype, but we have serious topics to talk about. And if we stay on this archetype for too long, I'm not gonna. I can't contain the VTuber horniness for that long. No, yeah. So we gotta. We have to quarantine ourselves away. We've had our section where we could talk about dragon genitals. Now it's time for some real. Okay. So Konami made a little video um, to show 
off the new archetypes in this deck and the chase cards. Now, during that video, they alerted to Tempai Dragons being the new best deck and being a budget-friendly one at that. See, that sounds great. That sounds like they're addressing the problems that we've had with the meta decks being obnoxiously expensive, yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. I, I'm sorry to bring this guy's face into this, but, um, you know, so they, this guy, this guy's telling us that he's just doing his job. He's just doing his job, you know? Mm -hmm. He's just doing mm -hmm. his job. Yeah, yeah, he's just doing his job, chat. Just remember that. Never forget, hey, he's Joel. just reading his script and doing his job. You're doing a great job, bro. I love Joel. This guy's great. You're doing your best, and we're proud of you for it. So, that's... Uh, he was just doing his job. So, he talked about how um, players should try the Trident Dragon strategy, as it will be a strong and key part of the Tenpai Dragons, and followed it up with the sentence, so check your collection if you have one, or ask your friends. So you might be asking, what did this poor guy do to get some hate thrown his way? Why did this annoy so many Yu-Gi-Oh players? Well, you see, Trident Dragon was printed maybe twice in Ultra and Secret Rare in 2014, and isn't exactly an easy card to get. And while Yu-Gi-Oh players being Yu-Gi-Oh players, oh, yes, look at the price of that, this budget deck, guys, this budget deck, and you need this card. Um, budget deck, one copy of card, $100. Are you seeing an issue here? Yeah. You can imagine yep. that Yu-Gi-Oh players were Yu-Gi-Oh players and were like, wow, people are going to want to get their hands on this card ready for Tenpai dropping. So, yeah, the price of this one card shot up to well over $100, which I think defeats the point of this budget-friendly deck. Yeah, this is rough because if this was any other situation, this would have been like a cute kind of callback. Like, hey, have you playing for a while? Make sure to double check your bulk because you'll be rewarded for being a fan for so long. Uh, but the problem is that now these all cost triple digits for a deck that's going to be the best one ever. And we are now seeing a kind of reverse bonfire situation where mm. the card is still super expensive. But now you're not ripping packs open, you have people who are sitting on them, inflating the price to high heaven. I would never sit on one. Hey, Nova, do you have a Trident Dragon I could borrow? No, oh, I don't know. I haven't checked my bulk yet. Well, <laughs> I know for a fact I have one, because it's in my oh. Blue Eyes deck but I made back in like 2014. Isn't that ironic? Wow. Back then. Actually, you want to know my story about Trident Dragon? You want to you wanna know that? I had the oh, ultimate please. rare. I had the ultimate rare of it because it did have an ultimate rare. And I had uh -huh. that. And I was I met up with X the Dark One and I was like, he was, he was doing some Yu-Gi-Oh content at his local card shop and he was running a deck that ran Trident Dragon. And I went, oh, well, if you're doing Yu-Gi-Oh content with it for YouTube, why don't we trade your like secret rare Trident Dragon for my ultimate rare Trident Dragon, which I know is not the same value, but this card's pretty valuable. So let's just do this trade-off um, that we, we can do. So I traded yeah. him the card, and then I went, whoa, since this is our first time hanging out and stuff, why don't you, like, sign the card so we can always remember our friendship? So while I do have a Trident Dragon, it is signed by a friend. So I'm like, mm. by, yeah. And by X of the Dark one, at that. Yeah, yeah, which I thought was a cute little nod to... It's a very, a very 2014 thing. <laughs> Oh, but that's cute. I like that. Yeah, it's cute. But I'm just like, God, I do have a Trident Dragon, but it's got a little story to it. Yeah. So. That's like double value. Mm mm. Yeah, it's all. There you go. There's a little bit of wholesomeness in this Trident Dragon monstrosity situation. I wanted to remember my first ever trade with a friend, and I was like, it's like a one dollar card. All right, maybe it was like I was doing a bit of a trade that was a bit more than that, but you know, it's not a lot of money at the time. It was fine. I didn't mind it, and you know, I wasn't gonna get rid of it. So, uh, yeah, I have a nostalgic one. Totally unrelated to this lovely old TCG that we all love, but probably super related to the TCG. We have Konami tweeting out their issues with how the Yu-Gi-Oh player base has been acting lately. To make sure I make this statement clear and correct, I am just going to read out the tweet for you, which is going to be on screen right now, okay? We're just going to take a little read out of this and have a little discussion. Chibi, I'm going to need you to duck on down over here. Perfect. Thanks, Chibi. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Appreciate it, Chibi. All right, chat, let's make sure I get this right. Dear Duelist, we have seen a rise in behavior which goes against our community code of conduct on social media channels managed by Konami Digital Entertainment. You can review our community guide of contact at that website that they had linked. Uh, passion for a game is no excuse for insults or violent threats directed at employees of Konami Digital Entertainment or other fans. Such behavior is not tolerated by us. Any player engaging in such conduct are in violation of the community code of conduct which may lead to a suspension from organized play. Online abuse and threats can also amount to criminal behavior, which is reportable to the authorities. Oh boy. Oof. Oof. Oof big is oof. right. Big, big oof. There's a lot there. Firstly, I think it's very clear, but it's best to state it just so everyone's on the same page. There is no point where it's appropriate to threaten violence and or worse to people. That's mm -hmm. just not cool. There's employees doing their jobs. There's people reading scripts and doing their jobs. We're just doing our jobs. We state our opinions sometimes and you can tell us they're wrong, but like you shouldn't be abusive about it. You can have a calm discussion. I've always been very much using of my Twitter to try and have those calm discussions with people. But yeah, um, I'm gonna imagine it's to do with the Trident Dragon stuff. Like the thing is that I'm not seeing anyone really know who's been saying this stuff or that, but it seems like Konami is now at the point where they're like, if you're abusive to us online or you come across threatening, then we're probably going to tournament ban you now. Yeah, so. um, it's such a weird situation, right? Because I, I'm not going to go out here and run interference for Konami. Uh, mm -mm. It's a company that, as we've just seen, released cards that were really expensive in a budget form, and now people bought into it, and now they can't play those cards. That's very user-unfriendly. They drop ban lists at really inconvenient times without any kind of schedule. That's really bad. But they don't communicate with the player base in any meaningful way. That's really bad. That being said, even if there's not, like, a big Twitter presence of people calling out someone specifically, we've seen what the Yu-Gi-Oh! community does when they get upset about something. They mm. find, like, a scapegoat, and if it's a person, they go after them over and over again until they're satisfied. And, you know, I'm sure that there is an email like a big chain of emails that they've got to put in a dumpster every day because there's people complaining about it. And, you know, I sometimes fear for the safety of the people who work the front end of Konami's public relations because, wow, we, we are not, we are not easy on people. Especially not online. We're in an era of the world where people are behind keyboards. They've got a bit of safety. They've got a bit of anonymity. And so they they say stuff that you just absolutely wouldn't say in a real life circumstance. If this was real life and you're at an event and you're getting annoyed at the event or whatever's going on, you might be a little bit frustrated. You might raise your voice or something. But publicly, you're not going to say the stuff that people say online like it's nothing. And I... I'm not defending Konami because, again, I'm frustrated with how they're handling it. Like, I think the lack of saying anything about cancelling speed duels in Europe was not cool. Mm -hmm. I think there's been a lot of stuff that's happened with Konami recently that has gotten everyone frustrated and it keeps going to boiling points. But as Nova said, we've seen how the Yu-Gi-Oh! Twitter and online space can be. And it, it can be hella volatile out there. And they are very publicly vocal about their disgrudgments and such and they can go aggressive i still remember the papa mutt situation for example which mm -hmm. i thought was handled atrociously by our community a big point that i think a lot of us want to raise is well maybe you guys aren't the ones doing it it's probably good to point out that like behaving like that being aggressive being abusive threatening violence because you don't like something it's no one's really standing for that like we don't accept that so don't behave like that remember there are people on the other side of whatever you're tweeting online and just practice a bit more civility because like people look at the Yu-Gi-Oh scene and this isn't the first time we've had this happen again the Papa Mutt stuff was a good example of that it wasn't that long ago either and that was atrocious and awfully handled and now I see Konami do a tweet and underneath it is just paragraphs of like 
bad comments and aggression and I understand that we're angry. There's been a lot going on, believe me. Being a physical player of Yu-Gi-Oh! right now is not the best time at all. But I feel like I see it a lot online where it doesn't matter what Konami do, I just see people complaining and kind of bitching about it. And I'm like, we said this last week, we'll reiterate it again. If you just bitch about everything they do and you're just hostile and aggressive and stuff, they're gonna stop listening to you. They're not gonna care. And it's just gonna make them ignore their comments on Twitter. They're just gonna post it and be like, so anyway, I posted that tweet, moving on. Like, we're not gonna be communicating with them. And there's already a kind of barrier between the fans and the Konami peeps. So we just, let's just try to make sure we stay rational, calm, and collected when we want to vocalize our disagreements with things. Because it's okay to disagree, but it's not okay to get very toxic about the disagreement. Let's chill out with the aggression. Let's stop getting so heated. Let's stop dogpiling everything. Let's chill the fuck out. I don't know what to tell you. Chill out. I'm so tired of just seeing online. I go on Twitter and I'm like, what's new today? And it's like, Konami announces a product that might not be your demographic. It might not be for you. And then everyone's like, oh, it fucking sucks. Fuck you, Konami. And I'm like, oh my God, this is just draining. Can we chill out? Constructive Lovely. feedback is fine. You can give constructive feedback. It's how we grow and improve. No one should be so ignorant as to not take it. But when your feedback is not constructive and it's just aggressive and hateful, it doesn't help anything. All you're doing is yelling into a void. So chill out. <coughs> Let's move over to Master Duel's interesting event, the Duel Triangle event. From the 18th of April to April 30th, Master Duel will be hosting the Duel Triangle event. This event gets players to join a group for either Fusion, Synchro, or Xyz, and has players form each group dueling it out to earn rewards. Each group is given a ban list and decks are locked into only using the respective extra deck method. Players are able to change groups throughout the event, but the rewards will stay the same regardless of what group you join. Each group will also get loner decks for their groups. Let's have a quick nosy at a couple of them. Fusion members can use dual avatars side by side, Roar of Illusion Beast and Dark World Scheming. Good for you, Fusion. Synchro players will be getting loner decks of the Crimson King, a Dwellers of the Fabled Realm and Earth's Arctic Radiance. Um, I'm just a little biased to the Synchro uh, there because of the Jack Atlas, uh, just a little biased. And Xyz players, you're gonna get Hot-Blooded Boxer, Eroding Crystal Domain and Evolving Genes. Uh, rewards for this event include 1,900 gems, the usual legacy pack tickets, three pillar titles card, and a set of Supreme King Azar Dark sleeves, which I know Martin is gonna be got. Yeah, there it is. Martin's already in chat. <laughs> Fucking knew it. I knew it. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Which um, archetype are you gonna go for? Are you going to go for Xyz, Synchro, or Fusion? Which one's your flavor, Nova? Are you Team Synchro, Team Xyz, or Team Fusion? I'm on Team Fusion all the way, baby. It's branded time. Let's go. Oh, no. Which one do you think I would be in? Because those are my three favorite summoning methods right there. So which one do you think I'm picking? Now, you said you were biased towards Synchro. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I did, set, I did see how much you loved playing Ojama Dragon made a couple of years ago. Mm. So I know you're going to join me in the fusion camp. I, I'm i between Xyz or Synchro, actually. I'm not joining you in fusion camp. I'm not going there. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, if I go to Fusion, I don't have to face Branded because you will be paired off with someone from a different team. But there's stuff in Synchro I hate that I might not want to go up against. There's stuff in Xyz I hate that I don't want to go up against. So, um, yeah, I might. I, I don't. I, I'm not the biggest fan of how Resonators play these days, honestly. Um, I just have to play them because everyone expects me to. Um, I'll probably be next week saying, "Oh wait, I can't. I'm banned from. I'm banned from Red Dragon Archfiends for another 12 days." Oh yeah. Damn you, probate! God oh damn. yeah, you have to play O-Dramas, don't you? No, no, I just can't play Resonators. I can't play Red Dragon Archfiend for an entire month. As soon as I got off Dragon Maids, it got banned. I was like, no. <laughs> no. I just want to play it. It's been so long, god damn it. You going Team Synchro? Let's go to, I'm gonna go Team Synchro. I'm gonna, I can't. I can't go Team Synchro. Damn you, probate! God damn it. <laughs> Guess I'm going Team Xyz then. Well have fun with your little Yumas. I will. My dreams won't die if I high five the sky, spread my wings, take we off, take it's off. time it's to fly. Time to fly. Yeah, fuck you. So the Animation Chronicles 2024 has new cards and some alt arts. 
specifically an alt arc for Silent Magician Level 8, Yugi's, or one of Yugi's Ace monsters, in his final battle against Atem, the Pharaoh. But that's not the only series that we're getting. We're also getting something, a little bit of everything, actually. From Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, we have Dr. Einstein's Singularity Fiend, a level 1 dark fiend monster with zero attack and defense. When your opponent special summons any number of monsters, you can discard this card and a spell to destroy those monsters. You can only use this effect of Singularity Fiend once per turn. Keep this on hand next time your opponent makes a big ol' Pendulum Summon and see how they like you after that. Next up, we have Rudolf Heitman's Ancient Gear Statue from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, a character I was not expecting to be attached to an Ancient Gear card. Level yep. 2 Earth Machine Monster, 500 attack, 800 defense. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Ancient Gear Statue once per turn this way, and you can tribute this card to special summon an Ancient Gear Golem, or a monster that mentions it, from your hand or deck, except a copy of this card, ignoring its summoning conditions. Very important line of text there, because while the new Dark Age Ancient Gear Golem does not have a summoning restriction, the old one certainly does, so this gives you a lot of flexibility on what you can summon, though the special summoning mechanic is a little wonky. We got a Jack Atlas card, fam! Jack Atlas from 5Ds! You know that guy? We get Soul Fist, an equipped spell card, which will equip only to a dragon synchro monster you control. A red dragon archfiend equipped with this card is unaffected by your opponent's activated card effects. Once per turn, you can change the attack of all monsters your opponent currently controls to the equipped monsters. And once per turn, when an attack is declared involving the equipped monster, you can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, banish it, and if you do, the equipped monster gains attack equal to the banished monsters until the end of this turn. Are we gonna be so strong? Oh, so strong. We're gonna be so strong. Okay, I'm sorry. We're gonna I'm make sorry. Starlight Red Dragon Archfiend. We're gonna make all their monsters that are too big to be destroyed small enough to get blown up. And then we're gonna blow them all up. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll, oh, I put the wrong outfit on. I'm good. I was a dueling or drama for a second. I'm good now. <laughs> Following that excellent display up, we have from Yu-Gi-Oh's Exile, Caswell's Antidote Nurse, a rank 3 light machine exceeds monster with 1800 attack and 1200 defense, requiring two or more level 8 monsters as material. As a quick effect, you can detach material from this card, then target a monster on the field whose current attack and or defense is different from its original value. Its attack and defense become its original attack and defense. Then, if you targeted a monster that you controlled at activation, it can't be destroyed by a battle or card effect this turn. Once per turn, if another monster is special summoned to your field and this card has three or more material, you can make that monster gain 900 attack. Uh, also worth noting that on the Antidote Nurse that we are likely to get a censored version of this card in the show, it has a rocket for a weapon in the card art instead of its syringe. Oh my god, that's so sad. Uh, what was the Jack Atlas card? This one, Soul Fist. Soul Fist Soul is Jack. You want to get Soul Fisted by Jack Atlas chat? I mean, of course you, know you do. You You're my community. Of course you fucking do. I mean, that's what you have to do to get prepared for Dragon Brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you gotta do. You gotta soul fist. Just gotta, mm -hmm. yep, take it right there. I need a bigger bonk. You're not getting a bigger bonk. I will make a bigger bonk. I reckon I can make a bigger bonk uh, effect. Uh, there can be no bigger bonk than the bonk we have in our souls when we look back on what we've said, okay? We're already punishing ourselves. You know, you know what I want to bonk? You know what I really want to bonk, Nova? <laughs> Infinite bonk? Forbidden! Stop having cards! Doom, these sets have a hundred cards in them. Don't There's reveal them all! So let us discover reveals. some! Just let us <laughs> open some fucking packs! Jesus Christ, Infinite Forbidden, please. Just stop. Stop Doom, being infinite. Doom wants to go back to, like, early 2000s era, where you had to learn everything about a set out of a magazine. Yeah, with I a do. poorly drawn reversion of like a famous anime character you back those in ones? my day you used to have to phone a phone line when you got stuck in a video game and they'd give you a clue for about five dollars a minute back in my day Yu-Gi-Oh cards you'd just open packs and read but now oh no it's all online so you can preemptively make horrible combos oh woe is me oh, all you kids have your YouTubes when I was a kid we had to go down to the corner store with a nickel and pick up the Beckett magazine and we liked it. Get off my lawn. This is my lawn. Ah. The grass is greener. Get out of here. Yes. And my deck is 60 cards versus your 40. So I will mill 20 cards. Yes, I'm successful. 
what's the name of this new pack? Uh, the new pack that we're looking at right now is Infinite Forbidden. It's a different pack, but Chronicle stuff is going to be elsewhere. All right, Nova, take it away. I know everyone's so excited about this card. What if Max C, but slightly fairer? It's time for minimum C. Uh, coming out of Infinite Forbidden, we've got three new cards, including Molt Chummy Perulia, a level 4 water aqua effect monster with 100 attack and 600 defense. If you control no cards as a quick effect, you can discard this card, then apply the following two effects for the rest of the turn. The first one is that each time your opponent normal or special summons a monster from the hand, you immediately draw a card. And during the end phase, if you have more cards in your hand than the number of cards your opponent controls plus six, shuffle random cards from your hand into the deck equal to the difference. You can only activate the effect of other Molt Chummy monsters once the turn you activate this effect. It's Maxi if it was wet. Yeah, this card has generated probably the second um, biggest amount of discourse this week. Um, I have no idea how this card is supposed to resolve. Uh, the wording is so abstract here. I can't wait for this to get a TCG localization so I can fully understand how much of a chum Brulia really is. Valid, valid. I'm just like, okay, you said words at me. It's like Maxi, but not. Maybe Maxi will get banned and it'll be replaced with this guy. Maybe. It's not as strong. Next up is Flash of the Evening Star, a quick play spell card that you can only activate one of per turn. If your opponent controls two or more monsters than you do, your opponent can send any number of monsters they control to the graveyard. Also, you apply this effect based on the number that they control. Uh, if they control none, you have your own life points. If they control one, your opponent gains 2,000 life points. If they control two, banish your opponent's entire hand face up until the end phase. And if they control three or more, your opponent cannot activate monster effects for the rest of the turn. Wait, that cut's kind of nutty, you would. It's, it is an interesting design space for an interrupt. Because it's, it's a weird kind of lingering floodgate. The more they keep, the worse it gets for them. But they could also get rid of all their monsters and cut your life points in half. And then rebuild their board. And now they have an easier time winning the game. It's it's so strange, but I really love it. It's super wacky. Also, a uh, world legacy lore. Let's go! Oh no, not Let's lore! Go! Not the lore! Not the lore! But I look like a vampire. I'm feeding off the psychic energy of everyone on Twitter being all like, not more lore cards. Every time someone says that, uh, I get one year younger. So uh, keep it going, keep it going. Oh, no wonder you don't. Back in my day, I had to phone a phone line to get video game tips. Oh, I'm going to go back to being Vincent Valentine in a coffin. I've been here for hundreds of years. Vincent, if Sephiroth, Hojo, Cloud, and all that lot are still alive, you can't have been here hundreds of years. I've been here hundreds of years atoning for my sins. Vincent, it's been like 20 years. Get out the fucking coffin. You smell bad. Back in my day, you couldn't get past original carpet unless you killed Hojo. You can't kill Hojo. You had to play Dirge to do that. Uh, do you want to say a card name that my roommate was convinced is one of the longest card names you guys done? And I was like, no, nah, there's there's longer. I've oh, seen yeah, bigger. Okay, you and me both. This one isn't even close. Next up, we have Missing Burrows, the Dark Ruler of the Highest Heaven, a level 10 Light Fiend monster with 3,100 attack and 2,900 defense. You can special summon this card from your hand by banishing a monster, spell, and trap card from your graveyard. And if this card is special summoned from the hand specifically, you can banish a monster and two spell or trap cards from your opponent's field and your graveyard. You can only use this effect of Missing Burrows, the Dark Ruler of the Highest Heaven, once per turn. It's got a lot of words, but so does number 37, Hope Boy of a Dragon, Spider Shark. You know, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh name. They got a lot of words. Yeah, that's pretty big. Um, what was it? There was, like a, there was a new one that just came out. Uh, it's like a big zombie tower. Oh, I don't know. It's no super anti-kaiju war machine mecha thunder king. It's, that's right. Oh, that's... It's not. That's also pretty big. Yeah, there's a, there's some pretty big Yu-Gi-Oh card names I'm looking. Okay, here it is. It's not that much. Finis Terra, the Tower of the Necro World, is pretty tame, honestly. I was overblown. I like the Kamunga Sticky String Kaiju. Great oh, card. Great boy. name. Great name. Not a long name, but great name. Great name. Top tier Yu-Gi-Oh name. Can we do a Yu-Gi-Oh name rating tier list video? Can we do that? 
Oh, absolutely. I'm so here for making fun of slash loving on all of the wildest card names in the game. Yeah, and then someone just puts one in and it's just called something like moist and I'm like, <laughs> uh, Actually, be careful. What? That does exist. Is there a Yu-Gi-Oh card called moist? One second, chat. I'm about to... I'm about to oh, yeah, I don't want to... I don't hear what the rest of this is going to be. Technical difficulties. Oh, come on. I pulled that today. I pulled that in the progression series. Oh, so you knew. You yeah, already I knew. said it was gross and chat tried to put it in my deck and I went, ew. It's actually pretty good now that I think about it, but ew. Moisture This card is creature. actually really wild in Duelist of the Roses. This I like love a that game. God damn it. I knew I'd pulled that card. I've gone back to the news. Get off the horny brain. Off the horny brain. Carrying on. The OCG is not done for us yet, chat. It has another V-Jump promotional card. And it's a new Karibo card. Look at it. It's more Karibos. We got nothing else other than that. It's going to release in 2024. It's a new Karibo card. The Karibos are fucking everywhere. And the text of what it does is their good old classic secret box that we don't understand. Blessings be to the secret box. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what we got. Uh, let's just pray it's better than the ancient gears because they got it kind of bad. Oh boy. They did not get it good. And OCG keeps going, but these ones are hella cool chat because we go getting quarter century legendary selection packs featuring alternative artworks for polymerization and one for all. So polymerization will feature Jade and Yuki's elemental hero burst in a tricks and Avion being fused together. Oh, hell fucking yeah. It's gonna be so good. And one for one instead has our boy, Yusei's iconic Sonic chick turning up my boy my little bean i love it so much i want so both these cute. cards i need both these cards i uh, just it's a requirement i need them, them both now. i i need them both um that's that's the truth that's the truth all right gets a lot of words from me today chat a lot of words from me today it's not a lot of card reading so it's a lot that i threw to myself uh, the pot, yeah, dude, like, polymerization looks fucking awesome. I want to cosplay this dinner trick so bad. And Sonic Chick, well, I'm a 5Ds lover, so I'm trying to get every original 5D synchro card this year. That's my agenda. Ooh. I know. <laughs> Keeping on the OCG, we've got a, kind of an interesting one here because Konami will be releasing what appears to be a reprint of the Salomon Great Structure deck, but as an OCG English Asian edition. This deck aims to give an English version of cards playable in the OCG format. Not much has been confirmed in terms of what will be included other than Salomon Great Gazelle and Salomon Great Raging Phoenix, and this product is set to release the OCG in the 18th of May. So it's OCG cards, but in English playable in the OCG, and they are not playable in the TCG, so you can't use them in the TCG. You don't even think about it. They're being really weird about locking cards from in play now. Like, they're getting really yeah. strict on it, and I, I don't really understand it, but yes, uh, you can play these English cards. I don't know what on them is going to tell you that these are English OCG cards. Um, I, I think the designation number on there will help, uh, like the one, two, three, there's like a region prefix beforehand. So I think a eight. I'm gonna need more than that. that. I'm gonna need more than that. And I'm gonna need like a symbol on the card, you know? Fuck. Hey, this is Magic the Gathering. Come on, we can't afford symbols. Can't we? Like, Pokemon's really interesting in, like, it has cards. So take, like, the card Switch. You could play, like, the original 1996 edition of Switch as long as Switch hasn't had, like, a retrain and changed its wording. It will still be in rotation. So you can play any version of the card you want. Or you could play a Japanese one if you wanted. As long as you know what it says and you have a translation, you're good. I don't get why Yu-Gi-Oh! is splitting off all of its cards like this. Like... Um, I hear that there's a lot of countries that primarily speak English um, in the Asian territories that required the English cards because they don't read Japanese, uh, so they can read the English ones. Interesting that we're splitting off cards like this. Uh, I don't know if it's getting it more accessible for people or not, but uh, I'm going to go to Rush Duel, which has never been done on this show before. We don't usually cover Rush Duel. But I know there's people in my community that will really like this because Rush Tools has a new hero theme structure deck announced, which will come with a hundred pack of hero card sleeves to go with said structure deck. The sleeves are set to drop on the 10th of August. So I would like these. These oh, are cool. Okay, oh, okay. Right. Well, 
get out of here. They're, I like. I think they're subtle. They're cool. They're sweet. Like, they'll look slick. They're gonna look slick. Yeah, that, I think that's the right word for it. Yeah, Understated, slick. Understated. Pretty nice. Good, good compositing. I think it's okay. It's I like good. it. I like it a lot, actually. I, I love the design of this. I'm a, I'm a big fan of these card sleeves. Um, It'll be interesting, yeah, how they make heroes play in Rush Duels, but uh, super interesting. During the third week of April, there will be five new collectible items available in these little Gachapon bedding machines. This isn't a very good image of Gachapon, but thanks, Jimmy. Um, can we get props in? Can we get, can we get some bongo dooms in chat for Jimmy, who compiles all of the resources I need to turn this into a show? Because Yeah, big thanks to Jimmy. Like, he makes this a lot easier, because it would be way harder if I had to research all this stuff solo. But we just all keep each other in the loop, and he files it for us. So bongos in chat for Jimmy, the guy who helps make these shows work. Bongo, bongo, bongo. If you're on YouTube, you can't bongo, so just uh, say Iku Bukum. Um, we understand it. Yeah, get get us get us your best Iku Bukums, please. Iku Bukum, Iku Bukum. Um, yeah, so these are Gachapon machines. They're, we have these in the UK and stuff, but here are the five items you can get. We got the little Gachapon Millennium Puzzle. So cute. Mm -hmm. uh, this one I think looks the best. It's a little dual disc. Is a dual disc. Oh, that's that's a wonderful little little thing to keep on your desk. Uh, yeah, that's the dual disc. Uh, there's also a little Kaiba briefcase. A little Kaiba briefcase. I think that one kind of is shit. Unless it opens, at which point then it's like a million times better. Uh, that's not the Kaiba briefcase. That is Leon Kennedy's attache case. Oh, I'm playing Resi uh, 4! I, can... I love Resi 4! Resi 4 is so fun. Uh, and it looks like we've got some pretty good uh, space for all of our guns and ammunition. Oh, I can, I can organize that box so neat. I can organize it so neat. I'm so good at you know, like organizing Leon's box. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is like a third of the entertainment value of Resi 4, and I'm so here for it. Yep. Uh, you can also get the Millennium Rod as one of the little things in it. So cute. It's a, it's a little figure. You could put it on your desk and it would be cute. And then the last one you could get is a magician's rod. You can handle the magician's rod. Is that the right color? It looks wrong. It looks a little too blue. Right? It's not blue, right? Okay, I'm not insane. No, it's, it's not purple. blue. I think it's purple. I thought it was purple, but it's blue. Um, which is weird. So those are available in the little gadget pop machines. Personally, I think the dual disc looks the best. It's pretty good. Chat thought it was green. What fucking color is the Millennium? Not the Millennium Rod, the Magician's Rod. Guys, either we've seen too many Magician's Rods or like, I'm Google it, hold up, hold up. All we gotta... of the Magician's Rods that I've ever handled have always been purple. Blue is like a, it's something is that it you blue? see in like uh, romance novels. It's, it's hard purple. to tell, cause there's like coloring around it in the card. I don't think it's that blue though. Um, I don't think it's that blue. No, no blue. it doesn't look that blue where the magician holds it. It's more of a greeny blue. I don't, that, maybe it is that. Maybe dark magician, okay, magician's rod. I mean, like, it's it's really hard to gauge. I It is kind of blue, but like not that blue. It's like the dark magician girl blue, which makes sense. Okay, I got myself confuzzled. Don't worry about it. it. Depends on the artwork. Yeah, okay. I need. It. I just don't think that's the right color. I think that's not the Dark Magician Girls blue either. Uh, but that's uh, not all the merch. I got a little bit more merch for you. Not much, but a little bit. Across the 28th and 29th of April, there'll be a YCS Japan Yu-Gi-Oh Championship Series Japan at the Tokyo Duelist Festival, and you'll find some cool merchandise. Let's uh, let's have a little look at this. You can find Dia Bell um, X Dia Bell's a play mat, and oh, it looks so good. Uh, Dia Bell Star Card Sleeve which also look really good. Dia Bell's card sleeves as well. And Dragon Magia Master sleeves. And, oh, they look Ooh. good. They It all just looks good. Folks, get ready to participate at the YCSJ so that you can earn your chance to get the Toxic Yuri mat right now. But they're so good. They're really milking Dia Bell Star, huh? They, uh, I think they saw a lot of returns off the Albad stuff. They didn't really lean into it very much with thesis i feel like uh but then dia bellstar immediately came out and everyone was barking like a dog so they're trying to pick up on that sooner so they can get as much out of oh, it they're, they're super milking dia bellstar but i understand why i think she's really cool maybe we should cosplay her i think we could make it and uh chat that's not the only thing that milks involved them am i right get out am of the I gutter right? nova get out you're so infected <laughs> from ojamas get out the gutter 
Oh my god, we're getting demonetized this episode. That's what's happening. Oh my god. Uh, editor, I'm very sorry. You're gonna have to bleep out everything that I say from this point on. Anyway. And that's about all the news I got for you on Yu-Gi-Oh. That's, that's what I got. That's the news this week. It's always a lot. How is there so much news every week? Uh, because Yu-Gi-Oh is a beloved media franchise that has grown beyond the game, grown beyond the show. Kazuki Takahashi may not have known that he was creating a multimedia piece that would connect so many people and generate so much stuff. Uh, but that's the mark of a real creator, you know? You go in there and give it your all. You don't know if it's gonna be super successful, but it really connects with everyone. And that's why we now have Toxic Yuri. You know, it's that whole domino meme. You know, Kazuki Takahashi tries really hard. Blah, 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 blah. Feeder kids. Theater kids!